Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch. A few months back, I reported that the people behind RPG Game Maker MV were making a new product called Pixel Game Maker MV, and this was ultimately a 2D game focused game building tool. Now, RPG Maker has been around for 20 plus years, so they do have a certain pedigree about them, and a number of successful games have been published using their tool. So there is reason to give Pixel Game Maker a shot, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Now, I gotta say, this was just release. This just came out this morning, so I've only played with it a little bit. Give me some more time. I'm going to do some hands-on with it, and I'll give you a much more detailed version of what this tool is capable of once I've actually dug in and figured out for myself exactly what this tool is capable of. But if you're interested in getting in on the action, it is up as an early access release, and trust me, it is early access, uh, up on Steam. And it's charging, it's $60 US, so this is not a cheap tool. It's, an, it's going to have to shine in this day and age because uh, the 2D game making tool market is huge and there are a number of really great free options. You've got things like Godot and Unity that have great 2D support in 3D game engines. You have a commercial 2D game engines such as uh, Construct or uh, Game Maker that are also very well established here. And then you've got tons of free options out there like Stencil, um, G-Develop, uh, the list goes on and on. Plus we could get into frameworks like... Uh, you know, phaser, etc. There's so many choices out there in the 2D game market. What are these guys going to bring to the table that justifies a $60 purchase? And keep in mind, that's $60 now. This is actually going to jump in price as time goes on. Um, so that is uh, Pixel Game Maker MV, literally just released. And I'm going to give you just a very, very quick hands-on look at what the tools look like. Again, I can't give you much of a guided tour. I've played with this thing for about a half an hour now. Uh, enough to tell you, again, this is pretty early access. So the localization issues are definitely there. And if you go through the reviews for it on Steam, you're going to see uh, most of the negative reviews were in English. Actually, 100% of the negative reviews are in English. And almost all of the Japanese reviews, I think Japanese anyways, are... Um, pretty positive. And, and I'm going to show you why that is in a second. So here we are at the initial launch screen when you first launch uh, Pixel Game Maker MV. You got a choice between recent projects, creating your own project, pretty straightforward, basically give it a name, give it a title, and give it a location. Or we can go ahead and use one of their samples. There's a couple of samples comes uh, with various different assets out of the box pre-configured for you. We've got like an Excite Bite clone. We've got um, a dice game. Uh, a Metrovania style platformer, a pinball game, and a uh, character. I don't know what T-Cool characters are, but let's go ahead with the Excite Bite demo. And you can just open that up, fire it off, and it will create that project for you. And here we've got basically a, a quick view, uh, navigate of your, uh, your level or your scene tool. We'll get rid of that right there and maximize that. And here you are in your initial presentation for Pixel Game Maker. Now, one of the things behind this is you're not supposed to require code. You use a, a flowchart type program uh, process to create your logic here. And here is your primary editing tool. So you see across the top, we've got scenes, tiles, animation objects, resources, transitions, and plugins. Uh, I also noticed you come here to settings uh, for, I think it was Game Data here. Uh, you'll see there's quite a few options here so you can map out uh, the, the controls that work for your character. Now do keep in mind this is PC only initially. There is a Mac version coming later on and in terms of platforms that it will target it is again PC initially with hopefully other platforms such as Android, HTML, etc. coming online at a later date. Uh, but you see there's some stuff in here that you can do. You can set your resolutions. You can even set up um, some retro screen style effects. So we could say here we want to emulate an analog TV or retro game consoles. And there's supposed to be more effects coming later on. All right, out of there, come on back to here. So you see in your scenes view, um, this is basically your tiled level editor. So we got the different views that are available here. Here is, this here's a game level right here. So you can see an excite bite style level as you go through. You got options for tiling your grids on and off. And then you'll notice, eesh, yeah, so some of the user interface has not been localized yet. So you kind of got to guess at what some of these tabs actually do. For example, this is the physics layer, I think. Uh, but I just do be aware there is some localization that still needs to be done. But in your scenes, you have tiles, which is your uh, grid you can draw from. So going back to, I think it was this level here. No, or this one here. I think we can select the tile here like so, and then paint in our world. So it's pretty straightforward as your typical 2D tile based level editor. Uh, here's your scene list of various different things that go together to compose your game. So these are your various levels, etc. Uh, over here, so let's go back to scene one. 
you have your objects layer. These are the things that are actually in your scene. So you see you've got your bike and you've got a lift. With the bike selected, you have all these various different properties available for it. We'll see a whole bunch more coming up later on. I come in, oops, I missed. Right, let's come on back here. We've got physics uh, calculations and the physics tools that are available. We've got things like um, rope springs, explosions, gravity, uh, the various different physics effects over here. We've got groups for physics to interact with and not interact with other physics groups. Pretty typical, uh, but it has made the physics stuff pretty accessible, pretty straightforward to work with here, especially once it's actually, um, you know, uh, uh, localized. Sorry, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, see here we have others. And this is basically the other things that compose your scene. And that's it for scenes. Over here we have the tiles. This is where you basically bring in your various different tile sets. Uh, you can also bring in uh, fonts this way or numbers like so. Uh, you can define animations. Here, they've got an air animation system, timeline. Again, need a little localization to go on to figure out exactly what's going on here. But you can see here, you can define uh, various different frames of animation, directions, etc. So you can compose your multiple frames of animation under this category. Over here, you have your objects. This is, I think, probably the most intensive part of it. This is where your logic, I think, would be my primarily scripted. And here you can see the flow graphs that you would use. So here is the logic controlling um, your character. Now, you'll see, again, there's a lot of tiles or tabs for just each thing here. So there's actually a lot of detail here. And... I still need to jump in to figure out, and even then you saw here, there are actually subcategories within some of these tab categories. So there is a lot going on here. And again, these examples are um, haven't been localized yet. So it's a little confusing to try and figure out exactly what you're supposed to do with this information. Uh, so I do definitely need to jump in and uh, figure things out a little bit better. But you can see the various different actions available. And I'm assuming those are comments. I've got no idea what they, they mean. I, I cannot read this language. So it's going to be fun trying to stumble my way through exactly how this stuff works. But that is, I think, where the heart of your logic is going to be implemented. It's here in the objects tab. Over here, we have resources. This is basically all of the stuff in your world. So you see here, we got uh, the the various different images that come into your game. And then you can organize down by fonts, text, uh, videos, background music, and of course you've got a player, so you can um, check out your sound effects here. Uh, we got, again, also sound effects, same thing as background music. Uh, voices, variables, so here you can define variables that you'll use in your code. Otherwise, switches for, uh, I don't know, state, I'm guessing. Got some figuring out to do. And then animation only, that's a strange name, but I will figure that out later on as well. For here we have transitions for moving between the different uh, the different stages. Um, imagine it's for doing some kind of special effects for uh, how to actually process when things change between the different, uh, as we went back here. Uh, where did you go? So here, scenes. As you switch between those various different scenes, they are controlled using uh, these transitions, I do believe. And then finally, we have plugins. And this is one of those areas where um, they're probably going to shine because in RPG Maker, this is kind of where they shine. There's going to be a lot of DLC content. Um, so you can be a lot of art packs and, you know, added functionality, etc. And then this plugin support. And another thing is, and I imagine this is how you're going to go ahead and implement your coding logic. You can actually um, extend the functionality via the JavaScript programming language. Now, I don't know the details of exactly um, how that is done. Uh, I'm, again, going to have to jump in and try and figure things out. Now, as you probably saw from uh, some of the language things going on here, there is going to be definitely a learning curve to get up and going from this guy. And also, in the maybe hour I've used it, I've already experienced one crash. So there could be some stability issues here as well. So I do have to tell anyone that's interested in checking this guy out, uh, it's early access right now. And let's just say it's early access right now. So I don't think I would recommend this to other than, uh, you know, brave explorers, at least not yet. But as I said, I'm going to spend some time and actually figure out, you know, what these screens do, how I would, you know, go ahead and create a simple game from scratch. And I'll demonstrate that to you guys in an upcoming video. Um, also thinking about potentially doing a tutorial series for this from a tutorial maker's perspective, it's always great to get in the ground floor. So if the game engine takes off, well, you've got great tutorials out there for people to learn from. And when it's in a state like this that is so hard to use, people are just desperate for tutorials. So I'm probably going to try and do a tutorial series on this guy unless I dig into it and find that I absolutely hate using it, in which case I'm just going to walk away. Um, but yeah, that is um, Pixel Game Maker MV, a very, very early look at it. Um, 
And yeah, I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Does it look interesting to you? Now, obviously you can't judge it too much yet. It is early access, but they are charging you 60 bucks for it. So, you know, they're not uh, spare from criticism yet, but I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Is there, what do you need to see in a commercial 2D game engine that would justify using it over the free options or the other commercial options that are available today? Um, you know, do they have potential? Do you like what you see here or do you just not see the value in it? I'd be interested in knowing what you th or th hearing what you think about it and what you think about what you saw today, uh, what you would like to see me cover in the future, and if you would like to see tutorials on this. So let me know all of those things in the comments down below. So that's a very quick early look at the early access of Pixel Game Maker MV. Hope you found that interesting. Hope it informed you if you were thinking about uh, checking this guy out or not. And I will talk to you all later. Okay, goodbye.